question nine has given us this slightly strange curve. It's an ellipse um, with this equation. This is an implicit function. So they're, they're testing us out on our implicit differentiation here. Um, so if you can remember how to do that, you'll be fine. If you can't, here's a recap. So we differentiate everything with respect to x. Differentiating x squared is fine. That's going to be 2x. I now need to differentiate this product. So I'm going to need to use the product rule. So the product rule says differentiate the first one. So that's a 2. Leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone and times by the derivative of the second one. When you differentiate y, you get dy by dx. So that's going to be 2x dy by dx. Then we need to do the 3y squared. We're going to do the chain rule on this. We're going to pretend that the y is an x and we're going to differentiate it. So that's 6y. But then we need to times by the derivative of y because we pretended it was an x and that's dy by the x again. Sorry, I've written dy by the x there. That's terrible. I shouldn't have done that. We don't do that for implicit differentiation. This equals zero because when you differentiate 50 with respect to x, you get zero. Next job is to collect the dy by the x's together. So any term with a dy by the x, that's these two end terms here. So dy by the x. I've got a 6y and I've got a minus 2x. I'm going to add the terms that don't have the dy by the x's to the other side. So that's going to be my 2y and a minus 2x. I can then divide by this bracket here. So dy by the x is 2y minus 2x divided by 6y minus 2x. And then I can divide everything by 2. So that's going to be a y minus x over 3y minus x. Part 2 now tells us that this is a model of a, a cycle track. Um, P and Q are the points furthest west and east. And if you look at the diagram, they've drawn little lines down through P and Q for us. And hopefully you can see why they've done that. That shows that the gradient at that point isn't zero, a lot of you thought it was zero. It's infinity. It's a, a, a vertical line, not a horizontal line, a vertical line. So the gradient of this line at this point on the curve is infinity. And that happens not when the top's zero. That happens when the bottom is equal to zero. So that's what we need to do. We need to say that dy by dx will equal infinity at p and q we're, we're concentrating on p but it's at q as well and that happens when um, the bottom when the denominator is equal to zero so that happens when 3y is equal to x so we know two things now we know that the equation is true at, at p and we know that this is true at P. So we've got essentially a pair of simultaneous equations. So if I swap every x I see for 3y, I can solve this equation. It will just have y's in it. So it's a simultaneous equations question. And that's quite common for um, this type of... For the implicit differentiation questions. So we're going to use the equation that we had before, which was x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared is equal to 50. So then I'm going to bring this 3y is equal to x in, and any time I see an x, I'm going to write 3y. So I've got 3y all squared minus 2 lots of 3y for x times y plus 3y squared equals 50. I expand all this, I'm going to get 9y squared minus 6y squared plus 3y squared is equal to 50. Um, that is 6y squared equals 50. 
divide by 6, I'm going to have that y squared is equal to 50 over 6, which is 25 over 3. So y is the square root of that, so that's 5 over root 3, which we can rationalise and write as 5 root 3 over 3. We need to get the x coordinate as well. x was equal to 3 lots of y, so x is equal to 3 lots of this. The 3s will cancel, that's 5 root 3, which means p's coordinates are, sorry, I should have put plus or minus here, and that's important for... Okay, part C says explain briefly how to find the coordinates of the point that is furthest north of the origin. The point furthest north of the origin will be this point here. And if you look at what is happening there, the gradient's zero. So that's the point furthest north, and the gradient will be equal to zero. So that's all we need to write down. It just wants us to explain how we would find it. So we would find it by um, dy by the x is equal to zero. So rather than we, us setting the bottom to be zero, it would be when y minus x is equal to zero. Or y is equal to x. It doesn't actually want us to do any more than that. You don't need to carry on and find the point. It just wants us to explain how we would know where to find the point. 